kilometers of uh, such cable which has to be produced with perfect quality. And this is a, a, a prototype of the thing to just test that the, the object would work. Now, the next example is uh, an instrument uh, which uh, didn't exist in any sizable quantity about 20 years ago, so we had to develop the technology and the uh, capacity to produce these crystals, which I'll show you uh, were produced in Russia. Always the driving goal is physics. So whenever we design an instrument, it is to do the physics. And it has taken us uh, from the idea to the point where we are 15 years. Now, this is uh, uh, one of the uh, ingots being grown. It takes about three days to grow one ingot, and we have 75,000 of these in the experiment. And this is uh, the ingots being machined to create crystals which actually measure the uh, energies of photons. And uh, the next transparency shows the object being finished with a huge amount of electronics. I won't be able to say very much about the electronics, but a third of the cost of the experiment sits in the electronics. These are electronics which are radiation hard and uh, which previously existed in uh, space applications in the military industry, if you like. And this is the object itself, finished, assembled, and uh, uh, you can see about, there are about 60,000 crystals in, in this view graph. You can't obviously see. Now, we have to assemble the experiment uh, and install it in underground pits. In the experiment that I'm going to show, the assembly took place in the surface. And this is a surface building. So you can see uh, the, side of the cars are actually uh, parked at the side of the building. So it's a huge building. On the left-hand side, in the center of the picture, you see a shaft, which takes, uh, which is about, uh, about 30 meters in uh, diameter, 100 meters. Uh, uh, there's a cavern 100 meters underground. So the experiment was assembled on the surface. And in fact, in the, in the previous graph, there's a, a sheet of water which went about minus 40 meters. And we had to use liquid nitrogen to freeze so we can drill through it and had to be kept frozen for about two years. This shows the assembly of the experiment. Uh, this is a picture taken about two and a half years ago, uh, which is on the surface building. And then this uh, uh, is another uh, element uh, which has been contributed by Russia, for example, in this case. Uh, this is a, a few gentlemen uh, sitting somewhat contentedly because the shell casings are, uh, with the explosives have been removed. And these are the shell casings of the uh, decommissioned shells from the Russian Northern Fleet. Uh, this is brass. So it's been melted to produce uh, plates. And this guy has been obviously working for a long day and probably can do with a beer. Uh, it's a plate. These plates are then uh, machined in, a, uh, in Minsk, in uh, Belarusia, and then sent to uh, CERN uh, to be mounted uh, and becoming an instrument for uh, detection of particles, for example. So there have been instances, uh, many, many uh, instances of this nature in making these detectors and uh, many, many stories. Uh, this is now a film of uh, one of the biggest elements, the central element, which is going down the shaft. So this uh, is in the surface building. So the huge element, this is a 2,500 ton object. There's a crane which is uh, on the outside of the building and it has uh, four massive strands which actually lower the thing. This is a time-lapse photography. It takes about 10 hours, so it goes very, very slowly. Uh, and there's not much clearance. And here is the object arriving on the underground cavern. You can see it's uh, fairly empty. This was done about one and a half years ago. Uh, and you can also notice that the, uh, the coil itself uh, is quite bare. There are no cables there. In fact, inside that uh, bore, there are going to be about three sub-detectors. Three layers are going to go in. So this is the, one of the lowering operations, which is quite an engineering challenge itself. Uh, this is a still picture of the same thing. And, uh, after about seven months of work, you can see lots of cables and pipes and optical cables. I uh, misspelled that, obviously, looks like. And this uh, is also shows you the complexity uh, of the uh, devices. And this is always hidden when the experiment is closed and taking data. You can't see any of this stuff. So the next thing. Ah. OK. So here, here is actually a, 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 a virtual visit of the experiment. So if you can pan. You can actually see the uh, ex experiment in, uh, in, uh, in 3D, if you wish. If you move upwards, uh, you can see the shaft. So that's the shaft through which the central elements came. And if you uh, now zoom in, there are some people uh, further down. Uh, there's a beam pipe, for example, which takes the beam. So that's where the uh, uh, particles would be coming, bunches of protons coming one way, another coming the other way, uh, and colliding in the middle of the experiment. So this gives you some idea of the uh, scale of the objects and the complexity of the finished object. The OK, next. 
Now, in fact, there are uh, uh, 3,000 bunches which cross the center of the detectors 40 million times a second. So the interesting picture that we're looking for could be in any one of them. So we have to look at all of them. And we can only record 100, a few hundred out of the 40 million that are taking place every second. So we need to select the interesting events, the most interesting ones. And so for this, we have a, a, a put an analogy on the right-hand side. The left-hand side gives you a more uh, accurate picture. So it's, uh, these experiments are like 100 megapixel uh, digital camera, 3D digital camera. It takes 40 million shots every second, because that's the number of times bunches cross each other. And any one of them could be interesting, and we have to look at all of them. And these are shots of not events of today, the events occurring one hundredth of a billionth of a second and, uh, after the Big Bang. So we are revisiting, uh, as I said earlier, the earlier moments of the Big Bang. And each photo is actually taken into 500 different segments. The first thing you have to do is to put the segments together to make one photo. And, uh, and then this photo is then sent into a processor, uh, running an Intel processor. Uh, thanks. And uh, uh, so uh, only a few hundred photos, as I said, can be stored. And this leads to a very large uh, amount of data. Uh, and the selection of events occurs by looking at energy going at 90 degrees, which tells us that the protons have collided with a high enough violence that it's mimicking uh, the collisions that would have been occurring one hundredth of a, a nanosecond after the Big Bang. And this gives you some idea of the uh, number of computers that are needed, uh, 50 kilo uh, CPU cores, for example, in, in, uh, in selecting these events. Now, for analyzing this event, we've also set up uh, what's called the LHC computing grid, uh, this uh, unites the computing resources of particle physics institutions around the world. You're very familiar with the World Wide uh, Web, which was invented at CERN, which provides seamless access uh, to information that is stored in many millions of different geographical locations. The grid itself is an infrastructure that provides access to computing power and data storage capacity around the globe. And this uh, actually shows you the, uh, uh, the structure we have. We have a, a big center at CERN, about 10 centers, uh, there are two in the U.S., uh, around, and there are about uh, 100 other centers distributed around the world uh, in many, many of the countries. In fact, most of the countries that you come from has a center which will be working in particle physics. Now, the construction of these experiments has taken a very long time, as I mentioned, 20 years from concept to end of uh, construction. It's pushed the limits of several technologies which I've listed there, and I'll need to move forward a little bit. Now, one of the things, uh, uh, and uh, there's an award, which is the best of category award winners, will be provided an opportunity to travel to CERN uh, to see the ex experiments. And uh, I'll be happy to guide you guys down in some of the photos that I've shown you. And you'll be <laughs> So I'll, I'll take you down the experiment I just showed you. And the winners will travel on the uh, June 28th to July the 2nd. So I'll be hoping to see some of you there. Now, we are preparing these experiments for taking data. And in fact, uh, we have taken data with cosmic rays. In fact, cosmic rays, uh, uh, collisions take place in the upper atmosphere. Nature actually 